this color, I rarely wear this color, but it's fall. This is fall. I kind of match the pumpkins and I match the little acorn, whatever they are. And we are honoring the change of the season. Isn't it wonderful? And the beautiful leaves are beginning to change on the trees and we're so, so excited. And I'm also excited because you see this book today. My friend Hans Rufert will be joining me very, very shortly. And here's a photo of him on the back of his cookbook. We happen to have two copies of this. One is Jen's, this is Jen's, and then we have one that's Freddie's. And we're gonna do something with them and we're hoping to do a fundraiser because a lot of y'all really, really helped us out by buying pies for Hans and, and buying his kraut and buying the things that he does. And he still has a lot of medical bills. And so I said, Sunshine, why don't we do a lemon pie fundraiser again? Why don't we do that as the holidays approach? Because if you're cooking, you don't want to be cooking a whole lot. Wouldn't you rather Hans be in the kitchen cooking for you? Of course you would. So he is going to be joining me in just a second. He's going to go right around here and he's going to slip into his seat as we go to a fashion show. So quickly, we're gonna take you to Georgie and to Angela and to me and to Charlene and we're gonna go back to a fashion show and then when you come back, Hans has magically appeared. See you in just a few minutes. I'll show you just a little bit about what she can do to give you a whole new look and a whole new attitude. Thank you. We'll start by just looking at what I'm wearing for a second. Um, this is very typical of my look. I've got a little chiffon, black chiffon swing vest on that I like to drape over pieces just to kind of give them a little bit of a bumped up look. And then I've got just re one of my regular shorter, shorter tops on over an A-line skirt. So these pieces can actually be layered for your colder weather pieces and uh, you just, as it gets warmer, you wear fewer pieces, you wear looser pieces. If you have a very tiny or small figure, you can still wear these pieces loose or you can wear them belted with sashes to create more structure. And there are probably about 60 pieces in the line and they come in different lengths, they come in a million different colors and a million different fabrics. And the way that I keep the line fresh and collectible is by changing the fabrics often. So I'll do a run of 50 to 100 yards of a fabric and then the fabrics change. So they change often. Um, I'd like to start off by uh, showing Showing you just a small sampling of the collection. Marianne Bowman is going to be modeling one of the first outfits of the afternoon. And Marianne looks beautiful. Marianne always looks beautiful, and I'm so grateful that she's taking some time because she's a busy mom. What Marianne is wearing today will start in the shop. I have three designers, two jewelry designers and one textile designers, and I love these other artists, and I promote these other artists, and we love having them in the shop because all of our work blends and is beautiful together. So, Marianne, we're starting Starting off with an antique Egyptian scarab and pharaoh set in aqua and black. The scarabs are hand carved soapstone and she has the matching earrings on. Now Marianne is wearing something very typical of the line. This is more of the chain link uh, fabric that we were talking about and these are two other colors that we were doing in the men. We're dressing Marianne in these colors because these are her colors. She looks beautiful in these rich muted colors. So what we started off with is a bias cut brown chain link jacket. We went ahead and let the bias just fall on the side. The points make you look taller, make you look thinner. She's got a loose top on, but because Marianne's got a beautiful figure, we went ahead and belted this to give it just a little bit more shape. She's got this over a pair of slim cut bias peg leg pants. And um, this outfit is just something as a busy mom that Marianne can throw on, throw on, run kids to school, then maybe go to a meeting or meet with people that she needs to meet with in the community. And uh, so turn around just a minute. We've got a scoopy neck on the back, and, and once again, these pieces are very sizey and roomy. 
and they don't look like it because we've got it belted. You look beautiful. You look beautiful. Thank you, Mary Ann. And she's going to get changed, and she'll have another outfit in a minute. Next, when I when I started doing my my uh, designs here in L. J. I was very, very inspired by the way that the, the Old Town Square felt, all the antique shops, and the old time feeling of the Ella J community, how much they loved antiques, how much they loved their heritage, and I just was inspired. My first love when I started designing was vintage clothing. I had a deep appreciation for the construction and for the beautiful fabrics that they used to do. My favorite periods were the early 30s and 40s because the fabrics were absolutely delicious and scrumptious. So I started collecting beautiful vintage pieces of trims, table runners, crochet tablecloths, draperies, and started breaking them down to do special one-of-a-kind pieces that absolutely cannot be duplicated because they are one-of-a-kind vintage pieces. So I'm going to start here. Angela looks beautiful and she looks gorgeous and what she's wearing this top piece I was talking about other artists that show in the shop Kathy Cole is a textile artist from Atlanta and is one of the supreme textile artists in the south and I'm so lucky to be able to have and show her work at my shop and T Kathy's work is silk chiffon hand dyed and hand wool felted on top so Angela Angela is wearing one of Kathy's beautiful silk wraps that can be worn around the hips, worn around the shoulders. We've got it tied so that it's basically just wrapped around her and it's just exquisite. It can even be folded up and just worn around the neck like a muffler. I'm going to take this off mm -hmm. of her so we can see. Now the underneath pieces are the vintage fabrics that I was talking about. These actually were old vintage panels of draperies that I broke down and reconstructed into garments because they were so beautiful. The top piece that she's wearing is 100% cotton lace and it's a new fabric, but it's a small top that I did to go with these other pieces. She's got a small sarong on the hip trimmed in a 1930s beautiful lace that I was able to find at an estate sale. And then she's got this over a little skirt, a straight skirt. One of the beautiful things about the way that this line comes together is that every one of these pieces could be broken down and worn with something else. So this little top she could take and wear with a pair of blue jeans if she wanted to. This skirt is just a plain lace skirt and can be worn underneath a three-quarter length dress or with any other top that looked pretty and soft with this. Turn around for a minute. And we also have on her beautiful uh, vintage pearls because I also collect the vintage jewelry to go over these pieces because they're so pretty. So um, this is actually three pieces. We've also got underneath piece just uh, a, a small lace camisole done in the same bone. And uh, these pieces would be great for an Easter look, but they're great just to put on. I encourage women to put their pretty things on, look beautiful every it's day. Beautiful. So Do you love it? Yes, I love it. You look gorgeous. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. So next, we have this beautiful teal outfit on Charlene. And this was so easy. None of these pieces had to be done. She was able to come into the shop. These were all on the rack. She put them on. We gravitated to what colors looked pretty on her. And what we've done is a long tunic top. It's probably about a 30 inch top and then a narrow skirt. And then we threw a jacket over the top of it and the jacket is fabulous, but if you get warm, you're welcome to take the jacket off. The outfit stands on its own, and once again, she could also take this top, wear it with a pair of black pants, 
The same with all of these pieces. All of these pieces, you could break down and wear them with a lot of other pieces. This morning, just for the sake of simplicity, we've done looks that are more monochromatic, but there's not one of these pieces that we're seeing today that could not be broken down and worn with a lot of other things. Now, this is one of the pieces of jewelry that is in the shop, uh, done by another designer by the name of Kate Finch Rumsey. And Kate comes. I told you he'd be live in the house. Hans yep. Rupert is live in the house. Now you brought something live with you. Yeah, and live. Yeah, actually. It, it is funny because I love vinegar. And yesterday we had this for lunch with, we might have added a little fat content to it. What we, we added some fish. But we had this and green beans. And the one thing that I felt was missing for me is the taste of vinegar. Well, true Is there any way to do it? N true no. sauerkraut never has vinegar. Okay, never. okay, and see, it's what we're used yes. to. So it's what we're used the, to. The sourness comes from, just like how yogurt is sour, mm -hmm. that comes from the bacteria. Can are, I tell you, I don't even like yogurt. Isn't well, that no, weird? Well, that's okay, I mean, but I'm just yeah. saying, I'm using that as an example. Yeah. But I mean, there, yeah. there are a lot of foods. Like, in fact, vinegar itself started as fruit juice, that the bacteria started eating all the sugars and converted it into that sour taste, but then it sort of dies off. Now, you can buy live vinegar that has as the mother, it's kind of I a do have thing. some of that yep. apple cider yep. with mother vinegar. Yep. Yes, I do so have that. So that's still alive. Yeah. So this is the same process in that the bacteria, it's called lactobacillus, um, lives in cabbage. Uh -huh. And as soon as you start bashing it up and you put the right salt content, so really the, the only ingredients in true sauerkraut are cabbage, salt, and water. That's right. it. That's what Dawn uses yeah. in hers. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. Now, you can add fun things like I do, like yeah. cauliflower are those carrots? and apples is that and carrots, carrots and apples. Um, yeah. And cauliflower in there too, and sometimes radishes and mm -hmm. sometimes beets. And sometimes I think I would like this with radishes because yeah. I like the little crisp yep. radish. I well, like that. Did you try the ribbon? Yes, I did. And let me tell you my suggestion for this one. Because somebody I know that had lunch with us has um, partials. Mm. She needed smaller pieces. Gotcha. But we really liked that. You know what's we funny? really enjoyed that. So when my mom and I are, put, are, are doing the crowd, like, you know, because it's, it's, it's a labor of love. It's a lot yeah. of work. It's yeah. a ton of work. Yeah. And so my mom loves crowd. Well, my wife doesn't care for the smell, and my daughter, <laughs> Heidi, doesn't care for the smell. So we, we package it at my mom's house because uh -huh. the whole room smells like sour. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we're going for those big pieces because those, oh my God, they're so crunchy and good and yeah. delicious. And yeah. I've had a lot of teeth problems and I still go for the, the, big, pieces. Uh, the big pieces. So, yeah. um, and, and the reason I call it half kraut is because I'm not fermenting it as long as uh, you normally would because I do want to have that crunch in there. Mm -hmm. It still has all the probiotic beneficial things. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think the other thing that we should talk about, that, so the half kraut, of course, is Joe, my dad, used to call mm -hmm. Sang and I half krauts right, because we we're half right. German. And, you know, the word kraut used to be an insult. You know, mm -hmm. like if somebody said, oh, those damn krauts, you know, they were talking about Germans in general. Right. But like a lot of insults, people kind of come to embrace that, and then they mm -hmm. take it as a point of pride. Mm -hmm. And so my dad was sour enough to yeah. um, to be, he's like, all right, yeah, I'm a kraut, and these are my half krauts. Yeah. So yeah. my kids are quarter krauts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of the, the thing there. Not only is it because I'm half German, but the other thing is that I'm, it is fully probiotic, fully formed sauerkraut fresh, but I'm not letting it ferment so long. Um, and I'm not to get all nerdy, but I basically, I'm after a certain period, I'm putting it in cold storage, not cold enough to freeze it, but mm -hmm. the, the bacteria basically go somewhat dormant. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is alive, and it has to stay refrigerated. And every now and then... And what's the time span for this? Because you brought it to me on Friday, yep. and then we ate it on Monday. Easily, so how many days? Easily three months. Oh, okay. In cool. refrigeration. Okay. In re and, okay. And even out of refrigeration, it would last probably another week. Okay. Um, it's just that it will continue to we get more and more sour. We liked it cold. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we liked and, it cold. Now, and if you do want to have like, you know, kraut and weenies, which people do, uh -huh. just don't heat it above 140 degrees. So we can warm it up, that's fine, but once you bring it to a boil, you effectively kill it. Yeah, you've okay. killed it. I mean, now it's still going to be good and it'll still taste great, whatever, but all of those good benefits that you can't get that in a pill, I mean, that is the best. And, you know, this, it, my wife always kind of gets embarrassed when I talk about bathroom time. I'm, I'm not going to get I'm not going to get specific other than to say that for a guy with no stomach and no esophagus and a huge amount of my guts removed, I have been so much more energetic and so much healthier and so much just every day. I mean, let's be honest, if you're having bathroom problems, your whole day is miserable, right. you know? Right. So eating raw, fresh 
probiotic foods, and for me, it is things like yogurt and sauerkraut and uh, kimchi, which is basically Korean sauerkraut. Mm -hmm. um, those kind of things have been uh, fantastic for me uh, mm -hmm. during recovery and just day to day. You know? Well, it's weird because when you said the bathroom problem, my mother, who um, my mother, some of my aunts, my daughter, all had weight loss surgery, mm. and y'all can just live with me the way I am because I'm not going through no, that's that a, crap. That's a big one. I'm not doing it. I'm not having it. Angela lost her hair, her fingernails, her teeth. Yep. She lost all nutrition to her body. She lived on two ounces of tuna and a few crackers a day because that's all she could do. Yep. And, and she really suffered and struggled from it. And so I try to eat healthy. I don't lose any weight. And they just did a bunch of labs on me. And my thyroid just doesn't work. Mm. It just doesn't work. Yep. So um, I can eat healthy. I can do well. I can stay active. Lord knows I'm active enough. Oh, yeah, I, I'm, on, I'm on the play everywhere. But is this going to... Um, I would like to develop better habits because my, my mother and my daughter, after their weight loss surgery, if we went out to eat with them at the Woodbridge Inn, we were at the Woodbridge Inn for three hours because yeah. they couldn't leave the bathroom. Yeah. No, if I'd you listen. get my drift. No, I, it, and and it is, didn't matter what they ate, there we sat, you know. The, the, there's more and more and more, not just anecdotal evidence, but actual hard scientific evidence that our entire immune system lives in our gut. Mm -hmm. And the bacteria that live there really dictate kind of how, how healthy we are. Things like the hair loss and the, and the you know teeth and nails and all of those things, really the, the, the entire, all of our, uh, immune system lives in our gut. And so by inoculating and by adding these kind of things, and again, you can buy probiotic supplements and that's all fine and good, but there is no supplement to eating them fresh. And even mm -hmm. I include the liquid because honestly, drinking the, the sauerkraut juice, mm -hmm. and people know to drink sauerkraut juice, but if you're buying the canned stuff, it's dead. Yeah. You know, so it just yeah. tastes like sauerkraut, but it doesn't have any of those, those benefits. Right. Because, right. you know, somebody somewhere remembered, oh, my grandparents used to always drink the juice. Mm -hmm. Well, they did it because that was the thing that protected you against winter colds even. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. um, so so yes, by eating this, now you will never, don't treat it like it's a pill, but you incorporate it into meals. Like even, I make uh, lunch for my son, Finn is now working down in Dunwoody, and it's expensive to eat down there, so mm -hmm. I'm, making, I'm packing him a lunch every day. So his lunch today was some of the red kraut with some uh, sprouted grains that I'd done in our kitchen, mm -hmm. um, and some, um, uh, it was called tempeh, which is another sprouted grain thing. And so his entire lunch was like one big old colony of probiotics, and he loves it, you know, mm -hmm. so he doesn't know that I'm secretly, you know, keeping him healthy. Keeping him healthy, <laughs> healthy but, yeah. uh, you know, luckily he likes these kind yeah, of things. But yeah. I, that's what I try to do is just incorporate it and into And when the you food. did these beets, because they do have that crunch, oh, yeah. did you just, they're just they fresh raw. beets? Okay. I took raw beets, raw purple cauliflower, raw red cabbage, a couple of Idalia onions, some fresh garlic. So everything in there is raw, nothing cooked. Um, and then, what really and truly, I'm not making the sour. Sauerkraut. I'm just introducing everybody, and then the bacteria are making the sauerkraut. Mm -hmm, and it mm -hmm. takes time. It takes at least three weeks mm -hmm. uh, in, in, a, in a very specific time uh, temperature. Um, because if you've ever made kraut it yourself, if you don't keep it in the right temperature, it can go sour and right. it can go bad. Absolutely. And it can also not ferment. Mm -hmm. And another thing that's interesting, you cannot use tap water to make sauerkraut. Because the you use distilled water? You have to use distilled water or RO water. Mm -hmm. If you use uh, tap water, it kills those bacteria. Well, isn't that interesting? Because if we're drinking tap water, it's killing our, it's bacteria. Killing our bacteria. That's you know? wild. So they put those things in the water to make the water safe, but right. at the same time, it really does a number on our system. So, you know, wash your dishes with it, you know, wash your clothes with it, but as far as drinking goes, it needs to go through a filter to remove the chlorine, the fluoride. Wow. Um, so, uh, but that was a that was eye opening to me that if this can't happen using tap water, what is it doing in my guts? Well, let me tell you what this did for me, and this was hysterical because yesterday was my day to keep baby. Riker. And I'm rocking him to sleep and I'm hearing my stomach. Ooh, yep. And it's going, no, 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 no. It, it sounded like I was in the twilight zone. Well, it, it was weird, but it was very obvious that it was doing something. Let me something. tell you what's happening though. So it, it's always about balance. And if you are, and I know you eat healthy, but if you're not used to eating these kind of foods, I always compare it to exercise. If you New Year's Day decide, I'm going to start an exercise program, you go to the gym and you pick up the heaviest barbells they have. You're stupid. And you, and you do like 50 <laughs> reps and the next day you're like, oh my God, I'm allergic to exercise. <laughs> yeah. Same kind of thing with this. If you're not used to eating these kind of foods and the first day you're like, this is delicious, you eat the whole thing, 
what it is is your body going whoa and the those bacteria are basically kicking out the ones that are bad so uh -huh. it, it's like a tide shift uh -huh. and so th there can be a couple days of like whoa what's going on here but, but I felt great yes and yeah you, I had no the, problem yeah. yeah so but yes yeah, sometimes you'll hear the gurgles it was tickling um, me because yeah. I was going what and I was listening talking to you because he was quiet you yeah. know and he's going to sleep and I'm going what is that noise well, it's <laughs> always funny because people say does it affect your stomach I'm like I don't know I don't, I don't have a stomach <laughs> I don't have a stomach, <laughs> don't have a stomach. <laughs> well what I ate was I ate a portion oh I ate a portion of each and then I ate some green beans and then I had a little bit of fish and um, I think that was a pretty good balanced yeah. meal and then I found this was interesting I wasn't hungry for supper last night I didn't forgot to eat supper yeah. last night because I felt full is that one of the other things that yes. it does? And so you know the was, what's interesting I always kind of give people a little bit of a pass and like I'm always craving junk food it's really not you craving junk food it is and th again this is not like hearsay this is absolutely scientifically proven that if you're used to be sort of a drive-through diet eating a lot of chips a lot of processed foods you establish this sort of colony that thrives on those kind of foods they can actually change the serotonin uh, norepinephrine dopamine the, those reward symptoms that you feel those cravings it's because those bacteria are releasing hey we need more we need more we need more and so when you eat those kind of hate to say junk food but you know we all enjoy those mm -hmm. things but if that's the the main component of your diet you're going to crave it more and so you'll find yourself hungry more because those bacteria are basically sending the signal to your brain that hey we need more but at the same token if you're eating those uh, high fiber um, you know fiber kind of fills you up like oatmeal those kind of mm -hmm. things uh, which are considered prebiotics prebiotics are the foods that help feed the probiotics and if you have that balance nobody's sending signals saying hey mm -hmm. we need more we need more we need yeah. more yeah. plus these are they take time, you know, they, you know, like how a cow chews its cud, um, but it's eating what's right for that machine. These things take time in our gut and they, they need to kind of sit there and work. And so they aren't sending the signal like, hey, we need more because mm -hmm. they're staying in your gut, yeah, you know? So yeah. I'm trying to well, kind of- Well, at 10.30 last night, I realized- I didn't eat dinner. I didn't eat dinner yeah. and I wasn't hungry. Yeah. And I thought, well, that's interesting. So <clears throat> now my favorite would be the beets. And um, your dad used to make something that cooked it to death. He cooked the red cabbage to death. Compare those two items. Is what your daddy made also healthy for you? Yeah, or but, not? but it's healthy uh, in the in the fiber, and you get the uh, the manganese and the iron and all of those things that are in there. There's just no probiotic component, mm -hmm. you know. So, mm -hmm. it's, but it's not as healthy as this. Plus, there was a lot of sugar in that. Why is there? Um, and you know, as a cancer patient, you always hear that. That, that uh, cancer loves sugar. It yeah. feeds on it. You yeah. know? So it yeah. um, doesn't mean that's going to necessarily give you cancer, but if you if you are if you have a genetic propensity towards tumors, you know that's the kind of thing that you have to you have to watch. Right. Um, I am actually thinking the next batch I'm going to make one that is in the same flavor profile with cloves and a little cinnamon and a little allspice. Mm -hmm. um, just see how I that love allspice. Oh, me too. Yeah, I yeah. love allspice. That would be really really cool. <clears throat> now to do this, um, chop it in little pieces. I would do that. I would. As I served it to guests, I would do that. But to have that with a pork dish, um, if you baked a pork loin, you know, so and you're not again, gonna be frying room it. Room temperature, if you don't want it cold, or just warm it, you know, mm -hmm. just put it, even in a crock pot, just don't bring it to a boil. Mm -hmm. You know, keep it, like I said, 120, 130 is warm enough if you like warm kraut, which it, it's totally fine for that. But I honestly like to have something hot with something cold. I like yeah. to have that sort of almost well, like Well, we slaw. had our warm green beans, and then we had yeah. these two cold. You did like so. slaw almost, you know, you have it <laughs> exactly. there. Exactly. sandwich, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, again, I leave the liquid in this because <coughs> the liquid is incredibly healthy, but you might want to drain it or use tongs or whatever, you know, if you want to put it on a sandwich, you don't want to mm -hmm. have all that liquid right. on there, so. And you know, I didn't think about that, but I could make a Reuben a different, oh, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, with that. God, so, the crunch in that, and honestly, yeah. that one on a Reuben too. Oh, wow. Because um, you'll have all of that crunch, and I, I'm a 95% vegetarian now, really kind of going almost 100%. Um, and there are, I've had some veggie Reubens where they're taking really thin slices of uh, zucchini mm -hmm. and kind of getting the water out, you know, like and pressing it and then peppering the zucchini and having that instead of the pastrami. And it's been fantastic. You know, really? if you eat like that, you'll find that, <coughs> you know, to me, the, obviously I don't have a stomach, so it's hard for me to break down meat. But 
I think all of us can relate to a time where you ate a big old steak and all of a sudden you just feel like, oh my God, yes. I just want to crawl yeah. in the bed and sleep forever. Yes. Because yeah. your body's going, what am I going to do with this thing? You know, mm -hmm. even even with a full GI system, it's a lot of work to try to break that down. Yep. It might have 25 grams of protein, but it's it's in a way that our body can't easily get mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. As opposed to something like this or beans or, or any of these uh, legumes, lentils, those kind of things that are super high in protein that our body can just can just take. Right. You know? so, right. Um, now tell folks where they can get this because I absolutely, I've made a commitment to myself. I'm going to do at least one a week of each of them. <clears throat> I'm going to learn to use it in different recipes. I'm going to, because it was funny yesterday to realize that I'm kind of listening to my stomach yep. and I'm thinking it's at work and then to realize that it was 1030 last night and I wasn't hungry and I didn't wake up starving to death this morning. You know, sometimes you wake up in the morning oh, yeah. and say, oh, I'm so hungry. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't wake up hungry. I, I think it's so, interesting how you said you listen to your stomach. I think more and more we need to listen to our bodies. And, you know, from Sonia's diagnosis where she went several times and they said, don't worry about it. And then my diagnosis, I went twice and they said, don't worry about it, knowing there was something wrong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we look at the medical community, which God bless them, they, you know, they save our lives, but we treat them almost like they're police. Mm -hmm. uh, and we want a doctor to say, don't worry <coughs> about it. And so we take that as, a, oh, don't worry about it. But if you know something's not right or mm -hmm. something's not, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, mm -hmm. it's something you have to find a medical professional that will listen to you, will talk with you, not mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's important well, I, that you say I could that. tell you a horror story that would probably scare all of us, but... We have a dear, dear cousin who is like, you know, if you choose somebody you really, really love in life, I, I really, really love him. He was married to my precious, precious cousin, Joan. She died suddenly after surgery that just things went bad. And he has been battling prostate cancer. He has been getting, I think it's radiation, but it's causing big things to happen mm. in here, like big things to appear and right. pop up. So you know that they're treating you with something that is giving you something sure, else. Sure. And and I'm just like, and he is he is the best guy. And so yesterday we Don said, Mama, you gotta ask everybody to pray for John because he's beating the cancer here, but yep. it's moving here yep. and causing problems. And you're like, Holy cow, you know, what do we do to battle cancer without it traveling to other parts of his body? And you know, when J S was diagnosed, the doctor said Mr Martin, you have a traveling cancer. Yep. I'm gonna try to cut its trip short. The trip was very fast, very rampant, and it ate yeah, his body up. Sure. It went brain, spine, bones. Yeah. It went everywhere very, very fast. So if we start eating healthy, if we start fighting for our lives. I, I think that's the most important thing is that, you know, it can get overwhelming. I mean, seriously, if you if you read and you go, oh my God, everything causes cancer. Well, you know, it's like people get overwhelmed and they feel like they're sort of beaten up. But I always tell people, you can't control your genetics. You no. can't always and control. And yours is genetic. It, it, there definitely there's a component of that. Right. Um, and, but Your I think grandmother? And my, her, my sister and my yeah. grandmother's mother right. uh, had it. But I also think And didn't your grandfather also end up with cancer? Yes, he did. Yes. Um, but I also feel like, though, that us being in, around smoke so much as children had a huge yes. part. That, yes. that may, not necessarily caused it, but also <coughs> sped it up, you know. Right, right. Um, but, you know, the things you, it's, it's sort of the serenity prayer. I mean, you, you, you do the things that you can control. Those are the things you worry about. So I can't control my genetics. I can't necessarily control my environment. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. to the to the most, to the best I can. But I bet what, nobody smokes in your house no, today. No, 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 no. <laughs> and I, I I steer a wide path around those who do. Yeah. But the the one thing that we can consistently control is how what we put in our machine. Mm -hmm. All right, think about that Lincoln of yours, which has been an interesting story. But let's just think about you spend X amount of money on a car. Let's just pick a number. Let's say you spend thirty grand on a car. Would you ever open the gas flap of that and pour Aunt Jemima pancake syrup in there? Nope. Why? It's the it wrong, would ruin the it's engine. It's the wrong fuel for that engine. Yep. Yep. Yet we do that to our engines all the time, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and so then we wonder, well, why? You know, you um, yesterday I went to a, a Asian grocery store that I love, and in the bottom of my cart when I got to the car. The person who had the cart ahead of me had purchased a, a drink mix, like a lime flavored. And I tried to bring it back and they're like, no, it's a, you know, you can have it. So I brought it home and I looked at the ingredients. I thought there's not a single ingredient in this that I would feed to my dog, my cat, my pet bird. Oh and, it, and it says artificial flavor, artificial whatever, FDNC blue number five, FDNC yellow number five. And, and I thought, well, yeah, I got this for free. It's going in the trash can. Yes, I, there's yes. no way that yeah. I'm going to eat any of this. Yeah. Now, 
again, it, it, with, with kids, we think, oh, let's give them a blah, blah, blah. Are you doing them a favor? You're feeding them things. And I, again, I don't want to sound militant. I don't want to make people think, oh, he's a food, you know, freak. No, I'm not. I just, you know, if you saw, if somebody gave you a little human and said, take care of this, would you take, you know, a spoonful of uh, hydrogenated whatever or high fructose or whatever? No, you wouldn't. You'd give them mm -hmm. oatmeal or applesauce yeah, or yeah, things yeah. that are recognizable as food. Yeah. So why is it when we go out to eat and we just think, oh, let's celebrate and we're doing, you know, things that are not the right fuel for our engine. And then we wonder, why am I breaking out? Why am I so tired? I have no energy. Well, what are you, what are you you're putting syrup in your, in mm -hmm. your Lincoln. Yeah, yeah. Or your Porsche or your whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, at some point you have to have, and honestly, that epiphany to me came when I had to. I had to hit that wall. You remember there's a lady said, God slap you in the face. I mean, if somebody told you that and you passed it on to me, this mm -hmm, is back in like mm -hmm, 2005. Mm -hmm. Here I was thinking I'm going a million miles an hour, going to New York and doing the next, we never start all these things and God slapped me in the face. Mm -hmm. Well, but that was a hard slap. It was a brick wall that I had to go, hey, and even now, if I have the opportunity to travel and I'm surrounded by all these great foods, but if I eat them, I'm going to feel miserable. Yeah. I don't have yeah. the luxury of stomach acid, so if I eat like crap, I'm going to feel like crap. Pardon yep. my French. Yep. Um, but if I eat fresh, vibrant, healthy foods, it sounds redundant to even have to say it, but if I eat well, I feel well. Yeah. You know? Well, let me, I want to share a recipe with you <clears throat> that I want you to share later. <clears throat> and y'all, oh, my allergies are I'm killing sorry. me. <clears throat> this is pure allergy. Last year, I made, one day, I had a meal with a friend, and she stuffed her turkey with lemons, and mm. I loved the taste of the citrus. So I went home, and I bought a whole hen, and I boiled this hen, and I took it out of the um, broth, and at that time, I was fighting allergies, and I was really hacking and, and coughing and just really feeling cruddy. <clears throat> and I kept saying, what can I eat? What, what would make me feel better? Well, I love, I might be addicted to lemons. I just That's might great. be addicted to You're lemons. You're never going to get scurvy. <laughs> I love lemons. <clears throat> so I boiled this whole hen, took it out of the broth, and then I um, thickened the broth a little bit and with flour. I used flour and I thickened the broth and then I cut the chicken apart and I put it back in the broth and I made chicken piccata soup. Oh, nice by using lemon and capers. <clears throat> and I would buy like a whole bag of lemons. Well, for a week I lived on that and it felt so good. Yeah. It tasted good, it was refreshing, it was light. It was filling, but it was light. Does that make sense? Well, absolutely. You and, know? and you know, another way, another thing that I might add to that would be And chicken something. piccata came from my love from the chicken oh, piccata yeah. at the Woodbridge Inn, so. But if you add things <coughs> like whole grain sorghum or barley, uh, or some of those high protein whole grains, mm -hmm. they're gonna give you that sustained energy. So you'll still have all the flavor, all the comfort, all the texture, but if you have, you've had barley soup. My dad I used love to barley, make a yes, barley I love soup. barley. Love Soups it. like that, people think of them as a winter soup. Now, where do I purchase that barley to go in? this soup oh, to give it a more every grocery store now okay. barley is in a weird space it's not with the beans and whatever it's gonna be with the rice aisle okay and um, I actually have a hard time finding it and you can buy the quick barley or the standard rolled barley the quick one is it's kind of like parboiled rice it takes you know 20 minutes instead of an hour or okay, okay. Uh, and you can either cook it separately or you can cook it in your stock and and actually the starch from that cooking it in your stock will help thicken, thicken it, it. Okay. so you wouldn't necessarily need the flour yeah. in fact if you do add the flour you can <coughs> end up with paste mm -hmm. um, so I would always you know if you're gonna do it in there I would let that go for a while See, I hadn't thought of your dad's mushroom barley soup in years I love oh, that incredible. soup it's, oh but, my gosh but it really it's really incredible all around the year but people think of it as a winter soup because they feel like the barley sort of nourishing it's it is, but it's not just in the winter time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it also gives you the same like you eat oatmeal. I'm, I'm sure you've had this experience. You eat a bowl of oatmeal, and you really don't get that hungry. I yeah, mean, yeah. It, because it's again, it's high protein. It's a complex uh, um, carbohydrate, so it doesn't just go into your bloodstream. If you're a diabetic, you know the the term hypo. Uh, sorry, not hypo. Glycemic index. Yeah. And certain foods have certain glycemic index. Well, the more unprocessed it is, so wheat flour, your body treats it as exactly like sugar because mm -hmm. it's so finely milled, it, <coughs> it spikes your index. Mm -hmm. But if you're putting whole grains in there, not only is it going to help thicken it, but it's also going to, there's something to go for. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't really like broth soups. I like to have mm -hmm. something to, mm -hmm. to aim for, mm -hmm. you know, so I like the, the barley or the mushrooms mm -hmm. or the mm -hmm. things in there, you know? Well, when I did this chicken piccata soup, I served it in a beautiful glass and I floated a piece of lemon on nice. top, just a very thin lemon slice, and I sprinkled capers on top of that because I love capers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I can, love capers. I can eat them out of the jar. Yeah, and, and it was so weird because then I, I, we called it Jewish penicillin yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah, Mama always made sure. Jewish penicillin. 
And so when I started sharing this recipe with friends, they're like, oh my gosh, it's so simple, but it's so filling and it's so good. And I said, I think that's what this was so cool about. When I realized I didn't get hungry, and I was yeah. like, wow, that is really cool because I only ate a regular portion. I didn't eat that whole container full. I wish you could. You know, I mean, you know, yeah, I did. On a, on a day, it's like, hmm. And, and again, that's where you have to kind of temper yourself a little bit because it, it honestly it looks like a small container that's a lot because it's yeah. a lot of yeah. a lot of yeah. chewing going yeah. on there well we are going to take a commercial break and when we come back we're going to talk about han's future and what he's doing he's going to be making some lemon pies in my future oh, yeah. we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes we'll be back shortly you have never been so happy dancing swinging laughing at me smile on my face it's happiness for days uh oh of your first trip to the local Dairy Queen or your daily visit for a $5 lunch special. The Jasper Dairy Queen has been a part of the community for over 40 years. Locally owned and operated, Jasper DQ is the place where specialty items often become favorites. Burgers, shakes, chicken tenders with yummy dip and gravy, and don't forget the rings and fries. Celebration cakes are always fresh and fast and include the awesome Blizzard cake. Stop by where folks are always meeting and eating. 515 at Highway 53. Just follow the crowd to the Dairy Queen. Fountain Roofing has been providing excellent service for 35 years. Let Lonnie assist you in choosing the roof perfect for your home and your budget. Commercial or residential, he can handle it all. Fountain Roofing continues to provide quality workmanship and will provide references upon request. At Fountain Roofing, we've got you covered. Call Lonnie at 706-692-6997. That's 706-692-6997. Since 1962, Gilmer Towing has been serving the North Georgia area and would like to say thanks to all of our customers. For over 48 years, Gilmer Towing has carried on a family tradition with an experienced and friendly staff that offers 24-hour damage-free towing, unlocks, and four-wheel drive recovery. So when you're stuck in a ditch, tires flat, or car won't start, give us a call. Local or long hauls, big or small, Gilmer Towing will get them all. Give us a call today at 706-636-4TOW. We've had Alpha Insurance since our first daughter. And when we had quadruplets, <laughs> we really needed Alpha. Now we need our own insurance with great rates, fast claim service, and a local agent we know. And we want to company our kids and grandkids can trust. <laughs> Call Alpha. For the best agents in the business, Call Ed Stepp in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. With speeds up to 150 meg, ETC and Ignite delivers more, more, more. More shopping, more music, more learning, more streaming. More speed to power smartphones, movies, and streaming video. More speed for more devices in your home. And more room in your budget with ETC's low pricing and bundled discounts. Get the fastest internet around with Ignite's new 150 meg. More speed, more savings. Call ETC today. I'm Lawrence Smith, the University of Georgia. Today we have John Davis, former Georgia Tech All-American, Frank Ross, captain of the Bulldogs, 1980 National Championship team in a Subway showdown. Subway. How many Subways does that Singleton own? He just up at number 17. He started in my hometown of LJ. Yeah, but he graduated from the University of Georgia. Hey, guys, who's hungry? It looks like Subway and Singleton Food Services Incorporated, the winner again. Oh, Subway! 
Chevy runs deep in Canton at Bill Holt Chevrolet. Deeper selection, deeper discounts, and we're letting everybody know it. Not just Chevy buyers in Atlanta. Chevy buyers in Blairsville, Blue Ridge, Jasper, and LJ. If you're out there, we're right here with one huge selection at Truck HQ. Always get our lowest prices and friendliest service. Online, BillHoltGM.com. Because when you're talking trucks, you're talking Truck HQ. When Mike leaves town, it's a little scary. You never know who might be outside. But we feel safer inside knowing our home is being monitored by a local company. I can check our alarm from just about anywhere. So when we get home, I know it's safe. Get peace of mind for your family with a local company. Switch your current security monitoring to ETC Security and get six months monitoring free. Call ETC Security now or visit etcsecurity.com to learn more. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. In today's changing world, some things should never change. Time-honored, compassionate services are what families have come to know with Roper Funeral Home. Our professional and courteous staff offers traditional services, cremations, as well as advanced funeral planning, which relieves the burden from those we love. Hello, I'm Kevin Roper. If you have any questions about the services we provide, we invite you to give us a call, stop by, or better yet, ask a family who has used our services. Congratulations to all of the students competing here today. They are all truly champions. For the viewers at home, during the first several rounds of play, spellers will be eliminated for misspelling a word, and that word is automatically thrown out. Only in the final rounds of play will the rules change. Swung. Let's get ready, get set, and spell. Okay, now let's let's make some money because you ended up with some huge medical bills. Yeah, medical bills and also the, the Woodbridge plight, and we can talk about that briefly. But um, you know, and, and number one again, thank you everybody for that. We had so many nice donations, and and we last time I sat here, my message was remember that with everybody that's going through those kind of things because yes. it is yes. it is expensive. Doesn't matter what kind of insurance you have, it is ridiculously expensive to mm -hmm. be ill. Mm -hmm. um, so. That, that's not just for me, for everybody. That's something yep. you, you have to Absolutely. remember. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but yeah, we, and we, we lost the Woodbridge Inn. You know, the, the rumor is because we didn't pay our mortgage, which is not true. No. Um, no. Um, but we had buyers lined up and the buyers left, basically. They, mm -hmm. they didn't get their financing and then sort of gave up. And, and um, there, that actually all happened while I was in the hospital this past time. And the bank took the took the Woodbridge, which I I have no doubt that the Woodbridge will be a phoenix story. It's going to rise again. Somebody's mm -hmm. going to grab the reins. Uh, but not only is it left us without um, a buyer, which means we weren't able to to we didn't make a dollar. I mean, and it's and it's over 40 years of your family's yeah. history where it was your parents' legacy, but then it was your it was actually their retirement and it was your livelihood yeah, was yeah. the whole plan oh, yeah. for you to make a living the rest of your life and then possibly your children's life and that was snuffed while you were in the hospital yeah, yeah, so exactly. it and was gone it was done um, you don't know um, how many prayers were said trying to save that place because nobody wanted to see the doors closed I walked in there as a realtor to show that several times and I've had several offers on it but they weren't quite what they yeah. needed and to see it shut down and no, dead is so yeah. depressing. It should not be. It is and so depressing. We've always been able to keep the lights on, and we would again. I mean, so had this buyer gone through with their plans, I was working behind the scenes to make that happen for them, which is, which is why it's doubly hurtful when I hear the rumors that you know I was trying to sabotage them. How would that possibly be in my best interest? We were trying to pass the torch yep. um, to the next generation, the next family, because I, I don't have the stamina and the strength uh, to do that. And I, I'm but you know, today, I, I hate to say this, because I kept telling you years ago, I said, if you want to live, 
Get the crap out of the kitchen. I, I told you that. No, you better. look better today. And you know what? You're healthier today. And, and here's how I and, and it's sad. I'm always trying to make analogies to sort of process things. I am doing better with no stomach than I did with half a stomach. We mm -hmm. tried for seven years to save half of my stomach, and I was in poor health. And as soon as we sort of, you know, bit the bullet, took the bullet, and removed all my stomach, and obviously I've had complications, but overall, I'm doing so much better with no stomach. But at the time, you think, I've got to hold on to it. Yeah. And I'm thinking the same thing with the wood bridges. We, we fought tooth and nail, literally at the expense of my health. And there were times, and people don't know this behind the scenes, like when Heidi was in diapers, you know, we couldn't afford diapers some weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, you own a restaurant, it must be great. No, I mean, you were in there, and if, right. it, if we had four weeks of, of, four weekends of rain, mm -hmm. it could be a $40,000 difference, you yeah. know, yeah. $10,000 a weekend. And that's not profit, that's just keeping the, food the cost engine going. And yeah, yeah. So there's a very small margin in food. So we were already trying to transition to an event space, you know, things that were a little more profit margin. Right. But again, I didn't have the, the stamina to do it, but I still felt like it was mine to save. You know, I'm going to rush in and, and do this. And I physically couldn't do it, and so I had to hire people, and I was taken advantage of. And I've learned that no good deed goes unpunished, and yeah. uh, it yeah. still hasn't stopped me from hopefully being a good person. But I, um, but no, I, I agree. So I'm treating the loss of the Woodbridge a bit like an amputation. Mm -hmm. You know, you can mourn it, and but you, you hear these these uh, wonderful, inspiring stories from these vets who unfortunately lose limbs, and they go through this period of feeling like they're you know inadequate or they're not as good or whatever. But then they find a way to to turn that to be disability. Mm -hmm. And I get asked all the time, and I don't know why people ask me this because it's not like you can snap my fingers and make it happen. But they say if you could do the past 15 years without cancer, which would you choose? And honestly, I think I would choose this route because I think I'm a better person than I was then. Because mm -hmm. then I was, you know, typical sort of in the rat race and trying to get ahead and money, money, money and uh, for dumb stuff, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like nothing, but now when you're every month, you know, my, my monthly- I gotta keep the lights on, yeah. I gotta feed my yeah. children. I mean, you know, so, but I, but at the same time, I, um, most of my time is in service to other people. Mm -hmm. And you know, how good does that feel? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and- And this is so crazy because when I met Dan Elliott, Bill Elliott's brother, he had been a lot like you. He was on the make it, do it, give it, yeah, yeah. you know, have it all, have it all, have yeah. it all. And then something happened in his life and he just changed and he became a, a wonderful human being. And he told me, he said, if you had met me five years ago, you wouldn't have liked me yeah. because I was da da da. And, and he's a better person, so you are certainly a better person, but you know what made you as, as good as you are today? People who came to your rescue, because if you remember the friend raiser we did in Jasper, oh, yeah. it was standing room only, people were there wearing your t-shirt, supporting you, loving you, and, and watching you come from the depths of hell, because you were in a position you didn't know if you were gonna live or die. Three times they said. Yeah, you're done. Yeah, you're done. You're done. And, if um, that doesn't give you perspective, nothing will give you perspective. Nothing will. Yeah. But but the community rallied around you. And once again, we're going to ask the community, would y'all like to have lemon pies for Thanksgiving? Yeah, so, you know, you, you this was 100% your idea. I wanted a yeah. lemon pies what started this. Uh, and let me put it, since uh, <laughs> we, I don't think we do trading time anymore, but no. if anybody has an upright freezer that they're willing to depart with, because I, I need freezer space. I mean, yeah. that's, that really yeah. is the, the biggest uh, limit for me is mm -hmm. I don't have a restaurant anymore to store those things. You know? Right. So I can make them. And I'm happy to do it, and I'm I love the idea. Um, I just don't have a you know I don't have storage for it, so I gotta yeah. I gotta borrow a freezer space or rent a freezer or buy a freezer or yeah, something. Yeah, but um, yeah. but yeah, so I I would like to think that we get the orders in the week before mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. You know, and are you gonna orchestrate this again? Yep, I'm gonna try my best. Oh my goodness. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Um, so that way I can blame somebody if we. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, we'll we'll make as many as as we need to make. And, and, and you know, it's so cool because people were willing to drive to my office in Ballground to pick up pies. The freezer at our office was completely full of lemon pies. Actually, Finn brought coolers yeah, full, and, and we put them in the freezer, and then people all day long came by United Country Realty, and we're right there in town, and they just would park and come and get their pies, and, and many people not only bought their pies, but made another donation, and it just, it, you know, it got you through something, yeah. because I've seen, I remember when JS was at Piedmont Hospital, and it was, Money for the snack machine, money for the crackers, money for parking, yeah, money for parking. this. Every time you turn around, it was money, money, money that doesn't, the insurance company doesn't Well, the insurance, I mean, my out of pocket every month is 500 bucks for my medication. That's mm -hmm. what insurance doesn't cover. And uh, it's due Thursday. And I mean, I, I'm not 
I'm not trying to play a violin, but it is a real every month yeah. I'm figuring yeah. out, you know, do how do I do this? Yep. And me having my medication or not having medication is the difference between me being upright and active or me being, you know, just almost right. broken, you know. Right. So uh, I do push myself, Sherry. I push myself, and my, my dear friend Sarah that you know from Blue yes, Ridge yes. says that I'm trying to outrun my own life. Mm -hmm. When I sit down and I try to relax, that's when I am aware of my ailments. And again, I, I live with this crushing pain on my right side, but it's when I slow down that I notice it. So I'm from, really from with the chicken's first crow until I can't, I was, I was up almost till midnight doing yeah. kraut last night. Yeah, wow. Uh, and I even told Amy walking out the door, you're gonna find me on the side of the road, dead in the ditch, smelling like sauerkraut, <laughs> but knowing that, man, I just gave it a full day. I, I am proud to say that I think I do more by noon than some people do in their whole day. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. I, I try to use my health history not yeah. as an excuse to yeah. not do something, but yeah. as, a, as my fuel to do something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to make a difference, well, and, and that's it. I, now, I if people hope. want you to come and speak to them, if you have, uh, if somebody has an event, they'd like to incorporate you, and you didn't get to see our new opening, but you're actually in oh, our new opening. Oh, nice. Yeah, you're on there with your frying pan cooking, and um, you know, you are still able to go out and to speak and to encourage Courage, and to be a beacon to those who are just beginning the battle of cancer. You've been there, done that. Well, Sherry, and I, I know I've shared this story. We're probably running out of time, but I, there, I had a gentleman call me, wanted me to speak to his sister. The lady was suicidal to the point of she'd written her suicide note. She'd bought the equipment to reroute her car exhaust, and she just happened to turn on the television, and there I was on the doctors telling my story and making some dumb joke. The doctor guy asked me, uh, well, do you eat like a bird? I'm like, no, I don't eat like a bird, I use a knife and fork, you know? And, it, you know, because that's just who I am, right? Yeah. So yeah. I'm making light of it to make it easier for me to digest and process. You know, I'm not, I'm not belittling the experience, but that's the only way that I could process it. And this lady had only been through a tenth of what I had gone mm -hmm. through. And this was, mm -hmm. this was before all of these recent, you know, mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. But she said, I, in that moment, she said, I literally turned on the television as my sort of, that was the day she was going to sit, and she just turned it on. And divine intervention, cosmic karma, whatever you want to call it, she said, all of a sudden I realized I'm being ridiculous. This guy mm -hmm. has taken, you know, a, a vat of sour lemons and turned it into a souffle. Mm -hmm. And so, but I'm not doing it in some uh, Pollyanna way where I'm putting it all behind me and just kind of going, everything's fine. I, ha I have my struggles and I have them every day, but I'm choosing, you know, it's a choice. It is mm -hmm. a choice, you know? My, my dad, one time we saw a guy, um, and I could tell so many stories about my dad, but we were in Germany on to visit his family, and it was winter, and it was freezing cold, and there was a guy out there who was working on the septic system, and he literally had a vacuum and was vacuuming out the sewage. Hmm. And he was whistling, and he was having a great time, and then my dad said, happiness is right there. It's a choice. That man hmm. has the worst job in the world. He's frozen solid. It's snowing on him, and he's sucking up human excrement, mm -hmm. and he had a smile on his face. And yeah. my dad was yeah. like, it's a choice. Yeah. Um, so many lessons. I've always said that. Yeah. So many lessons I've yeah. learned from things yeah. like that yep. that I didn't give that another thought until you know until I had to. But right. that's, that's those are the kind of things. And I've I've got three more of these in my head that I I just need to. I, if I had, if I if I could live without the worry, I could do more of these kind of things and mm -hmm. reach more people. So mm -hmm. that's that has been my my thing. I'd, I'd love to scale this up and have that where I'm making crowd and it's doing its own thing, but it's allowing me the opportunity to do more speaking, more lecturing, more writing because I feel like that's where yeah. I need to be. And you are making a difference, and and that's what it's all about because you've been there, done that, and you know when when Angela died, I took off for two weeks and I called my director and I said I'm coming back to work. And he said, it's too soon. I said, no, you don't understand. Yep. I said, I know my personality. And I know if I'm not yeah. back, I will never come back. Yep. I will sink into a deep depression and I will not crawl out of that hole. We all have a choice. Yep. Do we crawl out of the hole that often we dug for ourselves, or do we just sink? And so and, you and decide, it's, it's you make the decision. It's easier said than done. Believe me, I, my dad wrestled with a seasonal affective disorder, like when the days get shorter. Mm -hmm. As I'm getting older, I have that too. And mm -hmm. there are days where I literally pull myself out of bed but it's because I've committed myself to be on the Sherry Show or somebody ordered Kraut. So mm -hmm. by making those little obligations, 
it's sort of committing you to you're going to have to do it. And then once you get up and get going, your mm -hmm. blood starts pumping, your brain starts moving. You know, mm -hmm. it's okay. Mm -hmm. But the, I mean, uh, so we say these things, and I know there's somebody going, "Well, my story's different." I, I spoke to a lady for 40 minutes yesterday who was trying to one up me on how her story was different, and she had a hard story, but nothing <laughs> like mine. But I, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. every time she said, "But I, you don't understand," I'm like, "I do understand." Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I know it's tough, and I know there are yeah. days you're like, well, yeah. "What am I doing?" But it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Well, when when I watched you and when I saw um, me planning your funeral and me yeah. deciding what would I say at your funeral, I realized that there, but for the grace of God, go you and I, because very shortly after that, I was burying a child, yeah. and and I had to walk that walk that I was preparing for you. You didn't have to walk that walk. So, God does have a perfect plan. You have used your good news and the good news is you're healthier and you've used your good news to share with people no matter what you're facing there's there's worse out there yeah it is you know it's what's what's weird about that is you you then feel guilty when you're not doing well because you have so many people mm -hmm. cheering you on it's like you're the home team and like you missed the touchdown pass mm -hmm. but but at the same time it's okay i mean we all have yeah. those days yeah. we all have those days yeah. where it's just not clicking you know yeah so yeah. but at the same time that you the, it, right now i have more good days than bad and that's an awesome thing to say one of my big problems for you is the idea that you have to walk out your door and see your life in front of you yeah because the woodbridge inn was your life since you were a tiny child yeah and i do have a picture of me at 138 pounds standing next to this young man as we were at the woodbridge on mother's day and i had on my black skirt oh, yeah. my peach colored top that your mama chose the colors <laughs> And we, you know, you were a kid. You yep. were a kid. That's been your whole life. Yep. So I pray that coming out that door every day, you will see it only as a positive part of your life. You know, it's like when you drive by the old house you grew up in. I get to live next door to it. I'm not thinking about it so much anymore. It was a tough transition, but yeah. it, again, it's a choice. Yeah, it's yeah, a choice. that's right. All right, well, we've only got about three more minutes. Tell people again how to find your crowd. <clears throat> and do you want to share? Can they email you, message oh, yeah. you if Any, they want anytime. you? To... Yeah, my, my email is just, well, actually, my website is just hanscooks.com. Uh, and there's an email link on there. That's the easiest way to remember, just hanscooks.com. And um, which Chris, uh, Christy Lindstrom, our friend, was nice enough to help me get all that stuff going. She does a great job of those things. Uh, we sell the kraut and my spices at um, Out of the Blue, up in Blue Ridge. Mm -hmm. at, um, I thought it used to be the Woodbridge Inn, but now we do it right behind the jail in Jasper. Um, at Natural Marketplace, and you know what? I've got an extra little fridge. Maybe I should bring a little fridge and, and put them in ballroom somewhere. You know, that so, would be cool. Um, get... Well, there's a new nutrition place, and I was going to talk to them about it. Okay. I saw them That'd Friday night, so we'll see. Yeah. But but it is it is one of those things, y'all. When I ate it yesterday, I was going, I don't know, and I'm cutting into it, no, nah, and then okay, and then later, as I realize it's working in my body. And then as I realize that I'm not hungry and I wake up feeling refreshed and I yeah. thought, I, you maybe know, there's something and, to and this. And once you get to that level, when you start drinking the juice, then you know you're hooked because I'm, my mom was buying, for, before I really got into making sauerkraut, she was buying fresh sauerkraut juice for mm -hmm. the probiotics of mm -hmm. it. Um, but ma'am, when you, that's, <coughs> that's sort of the chaser. You get to enjoy that and then you're like, all right, bottoms up. So. And now you said like with this, um, it will last up to three months yeah, in, the fridge, in the fridge. But if, if people buy this once a week, is that a normal? Yeah, you could eat that in a week easily. Yeah, yeah. yeah easily. so for a week and it's um, available out of the blue. We love Sarah, she's up right downtown Blue Ridge. And then the other place, um, you know, it's interesting that it's only steps away from your home. Yeah, so it's perfect. It really you didn't, perfect. You didn't lose the opportunity no. to and I market there, something that helps people. Uh, even in the rain, I walked there because it's, you know, walking is a huge part of that whole machine, too. So I, I kind of push myself to walk whenever I can possibly walk. Um, but I'm proud of it. As a half kraut, I'm proud of it. And I, um, I've gotten great feedback. People that say they don't like sauerkraut, who didn't like the vinegary stuff. And again, yeah, if it's got yeah. vinegar in it, it's not And sauerkraut. I think I was expecting yeah. vinegar, so I think it was kind of a surprise yeah. thing for me. No, I was like, it's not pickled. There's no, no vinegar in there. No, it's, a, no. it's a live cabbage salad. Think of it that way. There you it's go. It's a live cabbage salad. There you go. So. And, and I am going to try it in different ways. I'm going to try to serve it um, as a side dish. I'm going to try to make a sandwich out of it. I'm going to try to do a Reuben using some really good lean meat yep. and do that. So I'm going to... I'm going to come back with some experiments. From uh, you it, know, so. real quick, uh, one egg, drain the kraut, one egg, and a little bit of some alternate grain flour, chickpea flour, millet flour, lentil flour, and you make a fritter. 
mm -hmm. um, and you don't blacken it. I mean, you just do, you know low heat just till it sets. Almost like a pancake is so good. Uh, that's a Polish thing, and somebody actually recommended that to me, and it is fantastic. Wow! Yeah. Wow! So, so you'll have to come I'll back on a yeah. cooking day. We'll do it. We'll We're going to do a cooking day with Hans in the near future. Love okay. It. You see what time it is? It's time for us to I get mean, out of here. To the minute. That's great. To the minute. Time for us to leave you. Thank you for joining us today. I hope that you will be with us again tomorrow because tomorrow we're going to talk about something that is close to my heart. I think you like animals, don't you? Oh, my God, yeah. Dogs, cats, uh, saving, surviving. Um, one of our dear friends who actually um, was very touched by your story is we're going to have a guest on tomorrow talking about saving those animals. Winter is going to be upon us, and they're going to have to have somewhere to live and somebody to feed them and somebody to adopt them. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. See you again soon, only on ETC. Bye, y'all.